the aggressive pleaser. There are people who are amazingly accommodating when you first meet them, so much so that you tend to let them into your life rather quickly. They smile a lot. They are upbeat and always willing to help. At some point, you may return the favor by hiring them for a job or helping them in their careers. You will detect along the way some cracks in the veneer. Perhaps they make a somewhat critical comment out of the blue, or you hear from friends that they have been talking about you behind your back. Then something ugly occurs, a blow up, some act of sabotage or betrayal so unlike that nice, charming person you first befriended. The truth is that these types realize early on in life that they have aggressive, envious tendencies that are hard to control. They want power. They intuit that such inclinations will make life hard for them. Over many years, they cultivate the opposite facade. Their niceness has an almost aggressive edge. Through this stratagem, they are able to gain social power. But they secretly resent having to play such a role and be so deferential. They can't maintain it. Under stress or simply worn out by the effort, they will lash out and hurt you. They can do this well now that they know you and your weak spots. They will, of course, blame you for what ensues. Your best defense is to be wary of people who are too quick to charm and befriend, too nice and accommodating at first. Such extreme niceness is never natural. Determine the strength of people's character. Remember this, weak character will neutralize all of the other possible good qualities a person might possess. For instance, people of high intelligence but weak character may come up with good ideas and even do a job well, but they will crumble under pressure, or they will not take too kindly to criticism, or they will think first and foremost of their own agenda, or their arrogance and annoying qualities will cause others around them to quit harming the general environment. There are hidden costs to working with them or hiring them. Someone less charming and intelligent but of strong character will prove more reliable and productive over the long run. People of real strength are as rare as gold, and if you find them, you should respond as if you had a discovered a treasure. Engaging strength or weakness, look at how people handle stressful moments and responsibility. Look at their patterns. What have they actually completed or accomplished? Don't always believe your eyes. The CBS News reporter Leslie Stahl had been covering the 1984 presidential campaign, and as Election Day neared, she had an uneasy feeling. It wasn't so much that Ronald Reagan had focused on emotions and moods rather than hard issues. It was more that the media was giving him a free ride. He and his election team, she felt, were playing the press like a fiddle. She decided to assemble a news piece that would show the public how Reagan used television to cover up the negative effects of his policies. A senior White House official telephoned her the evening it aired. Great piece, he said. What? asked the stunned stall. Did you listen to what I said? She asked. When you're showing four and a half minutes of great pictures of Ronald Reagan, no one listens to what you say. Don't you know that the pictures are overriding your message because they conflict with your message? The public sees those pictures and they block your message. They didn't even hear what you said. So, in our minds, it was a four and a half minute free ad for the Ronald Reagan campaign for re-election. Most of the men who worked on communications for Reagan had a background in marketing. They knew the importance of telling a story crisply, sharply, and with good visuals. Each morning they went over what the headline of the day should be, and how they could shape this into a short visual piece, getting the president into a video opportunity. They paid detailed attention to the backdrop behind the president in the Oval Office, to the way the camera framed him when he was with other world leaders, and to having him filmed in motion with his confident walk. The visuals carried the message better than any words could do. As one Reagan official said, what are you going to believe, the facts or your eyes? Non-players are masters at visual effects to distract from their manipulations. Guard yourself by paying more attention to the content and the facts than the form of their message. Easy money. Dangling the lure of a free lunch is the con artist's stock in trade. No man was better at this than the most successful con artist of our age, Joseph Weil, a.k.a. The Yellow Kid. The Yellow Kid learned early that what made his swindles possible was his fellow human's greed. Over the years, Weil devised many ways to seduce people with the prospect of easy money. He would hand out free real estate, who could resist such an offer, and then the suckers would learn they had to pay $25 to register the sale. Since the land was free, it seemed worth the high fee, 
and the yellow kid would make thousands of dollars on the phony registration. In exchange, he would give his suckers a phony D. Other times, he would tell suckers about a fixed horse race or a stock that would earn 200% in a few weeks. As he spun his stories, he would watch the sucker's eyes open wide at the thought of a free lunch. Don't let yourself get lured in by the prospect of easy money. As the yellow kid said himself, greed does not pay. Be suspicious of anyone dangling the lure of something for nothing. Get rich quick schemes are scams. The lottery is really a tax on the mathematically illiterate. There are no shortcuts to power. Avoid the drama magnet. They will draw you in with their exciting presence. They have unusual energy and stories to tell. Their features are animated and they can be quite witty. They are fun to be around until the drama turns ugly. As children, they learned that the only way to get love and attention that lasted was to enmesh their parents in their troubles and problems, which had to be large enough to engage the parents emotionally over time. This became a habit, their way of feeling alive and wanted. Most people shrink from any kind of confrontation, but they seem to live for it. As you get to know them better, you hear more stories of bickering and battles in their life, but they manage to always position themselves as the victim. You must realize that their greatest need is to get their hooks into you by any means possible. They will embroil you in their drama to the point that you will feel guilty for disengaging. It is best to recognize them as early as possible before you become enmeshed and dragged down. Examine their past for evidence of the pattern and run for the hills if you suspect you are dealing with such a type. The Sincerity Ploy Sincerity is found in very few men and is often the cleverest of ruses. One is sincere in order to draw out the confidence and secrets of the other. By pretending to bear their heart to you, clever non-players know they make it more likely that you will reveal your own secrets. They give you a false confession in hopes that you will give them a real one. Detect their true motives. In the Machiavellian perspective, few events in public life are rarely what they seem to be. Power depends on appearances, on manipulating what the public sees, on seeming good while doing what is necessary to gain and maintain power. Sometimes it is easy to see through the fog and pick out people's motives or intentions, but usually it is quite complicated what is really going on, we ask ourselves. In the new media environment, the ability to create fog and confusion has been greatly enhanced. Stories and rumors can be planted with virtually no source behind them. The story will spread virally. Before people begin to question the validity of story A, their attention is distracted by something else, story B or C. In the meantime, story A takes root in people's minds in subtle ways. It is an added layer of uncertainty and doubt that makes it quite easy for all kinds of insinuation games. To decipher events that seem hard to read, I sometimes rely on a strategy that comes from the Latin Chue Bono. It was first used in this context by Cicero and it literally translates to, for whose good or benefit. It means, when you are trying to figure out the motives behind some murky action, look to see whom it really benefits in the end, and then work backward. Self-interest rules the world. Don't be fooled by appearances, by what happens, by what people do and say. Nothing personal. A lot of people in life have terrible problems dealing with politics, with disassociating their emotions from the work world or the realm of power. They take everything personally. And basically what happens in these situations is, because nobody trains you for these things, you get emotional, you take what people say and do personally. The moment you get wrapped up in the emotions of it, you're done. You have to be able to look at life as if it were moves on a chessboard. Marcus Aurelius has this great quote that I'll paraphrase. If you're in a boxing ring and the boxer punches you in the face, you don't whine about the unfairness or the cruelty. No, that's just part of the game. I want you to see life like this. If someone does something to you that is nasty, get control of your emotions. Don't react. Don't get upset. Look at it as moves on a chessboard. They are moving you. Don't listen to their words because people will say anything. Look at their moves. Look at their maneuvers. Look at their past actions. Actions tell you who they are, not what they say. That kind of self-control is immensely liberating and empowering. Judging people by their actions and not taking them personally will free you up, help you keep your emotional balance. Everyone wants more power. There's the famous line from Lord Acton that absolute power corrupts absolutely. People quote it a lot, but Malcolm X said the opposite is also true, namely that having power may corrupt, but having absolutely no power corrupts absolutely. The feeling of having no power over people and events is generally unbearable to us. When we feel helpless, we feel miserable. No one wants less power. Everyone wants more. When in doubt, 
Assume that people are doing what they are doing and saying what they are saying because they want more power, not less. Know who you're dealing with. The ability to measure people is the most important skill of all in gathering and conserving power. Without it you are blind. Not only will you offend the wrong people, you will choose the wrong types to work on and will think you are flattering people when you are actually insulting them. Before embarking on any move, take the measure of your mark or potential opponent. Otherwise you will waste time and make mistakes. Study people's weaknesses, the chinks in their armor, their areas of both pride and insecurity. Know their ins and outs before you even decide whether or not to deal with them. Two final words of caution. First, in judging and measuring your opponent, never rely on your instincts you will make the greatest mistakes of all if you rely on such inexact indicators nothing can substitute for gathering concrete knowledge study and spy on your opponent for however long it takes this will pay off in the long run second never trust appearances anyone with a serpent's heart can use a show of kindness to cloak it a person who is blustery on the outside is often really a coward never trust the version that people give of themselves it is utterly unreliable what possible good can come from ignorance about other people? Learn to tell the lions from the lambs or pay the price.